Hi, good afternoon. This is Elizabeth Hardig with the American Planning Association. And welcome to the Plan for Health, Creating and Developing Story Maps webinar. We have an action-packed session for you this afternoon, but I did want to take a moment and just introduce the Plan for Health project. I saw a few new names in the webinar room, and we're excited to have you join us this afternoon. So for those of you who do not know, APA's Planning and Community Health Center was awarded funding from the CDC in September of 2014 to launch the Plan for Health project. Since then, over the last couple of years, APA, along with our key national partner for the project, the American Public Health Association, has worked to increase collaboration between planners and public health professionals at the local level. So we have awarded grants to two Plan for Health cohorts for a total of 35 funded projects across the country. And as you can see from Lewis's slide, Kenton County, Northern Kentucky is one of those sites. And each project has really been anchored by a community-based coalition with APA members and APHA members, planners, public health folks, who are really interested in creating community-based change. So all coalitions are working to prevent chronic disease and thinking about their strategies either as increasing opportunities for physical activity or increasing access to nutritious foods. So if you haven't had a chance to check out the Plan for Health website, I did want to take a minute to plug that. It is uh, www.plan4health.us. Uh, the website includes uh, individual pages for all 35 coalitions. We've got reports and toolkits. We also have an active project blog and an events page. And I just want to echo Lewis's slide here. We, we definitely use social media. And if you are following the webinar or any of the other Plan for Health work, uh, feel free to add in hashtag Plan for Health. So we are recording the webinar today, and we will post a recording on the Plan for Health website. If you go to the events tab, there's a link to the archived events page, and we'll put that right. We'll put the webinar right there. All right. I think that is all for the the housekeeping intro notes. Um, we will be taking questions at the end of the webinar, so you should see a questions box. Feel free to to type in your thoughts as we move through the the session and Lewis will be ready to answer any questions toward the end of the hour. All right, so who is this Lewis Hill? Uh, well, we're excited to have Lewis with us today. He's a geospatial spatial data analyst with the Planning and Development Services of Kenton County, Kentucky. And Lewis has worked into the GIS field since 2002, with Link GIS at the Planning and Development Services Department since 2014. So Lewis's primary responsibility is to support the Northern Kentucky Map Lab Initiative, and you can see on the screen there, um, NKY Map Lab. And he provides maps and analysis to the comprehensive planning implementation efforts and other Link GIS planning projects. Lewis has a strong interest in cartography and design and has received several cartography and mapping awards throughout his career. He has earned both his bachelor's degree in urban planning and development and his master's degree in information and com communication sciences from Ball State University. So a great combination. And Lewis earned his AICP certification in 2004 and his GISP certification in 2008. Lewis is also currently serving as the president-elect of the Kentucky Association of Mapping Professionals. So we are so fortunate to have your blend of expertise on the line today, Lewis. And I will go ahead and turn things over to you. And Lewis, if you're if you're speaking, we can't hear you just yet. It's possible your, your line might be muted if you just wanted to click unmute or enter 50 pounds, the number 15 pound on your on your line that might also unmute your line for you. Five zero pound. And just one minute, one minute as we uh, work through this technical challenge. One second here.
All right, and Malu, if it's, it's entering the, the pin, we will get started. Hi there, I think I'm back. All right, there you are, thanks. I'm sorry, sorry about, about that. that. No idea what happened. We like to keep us on our we keep ourselves on our toes here at Plan for Health, <laughs> but I think we're all set. So go ahead. All right. Um, so today's uh, topic is uh, creating story maps for Plan for Health. I want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, as Liz Elizabeth mentioned, I work at Planning Development Services of Kenton County in Northern Kentucky. That's just across the river from Greater Cincinnati. Um, today's topic is going to look at uh, building these story maps online. So a, a couple of quick background items to take care of. Uh, first, it, it, it helps to have some familiarity with GIS or access to someone who does. Uh, you will also need an ArcGIS online account. You may see or hear us refer to that as AGOL. Uh, these ArcGIS online accounts are free to individuals. However, if you can attach your individual account to an organizational account, that's even better. The uh, examples you're going to see here today are actually done under an organizational account, and it gives you a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more robust uh, capability with what you're able to do online. Uh, so if you, if you don't have access to that in your current uh, agency, uh, sometimes metro planning organizations or other groups like that can support individuals outside of their group. Uh, so what are the first steps in building one of these story maps? Um, Gather your materials, uh, everything from a project outline to text, images, uh, quotes, videos, PDFs, map data, um, anything that you're going to need to put together one of these stories. Ideally, your interactive maps are already built or the data to build one is already assembled. Uh, building the interactive map can sometimes take as much time as building the story map, so we're not going to spend a lot of time in that area, but we will create a basic one from scratch. Um, and finally, you know, consider your audience. How technical do you want to get with your story? Uh, do we want to use a lot of GIS and planning jargon, or do we want this to be kind of more everyday uh, accessible? So uh, assuming some people have had some familiarity or seen these story maps, um, how is it different than a typical map? Well, basically, a uh, standalone map, you click a link and you go to a web page that's nothing but an interactive map, which is fine except that you're sort of left there up to your own devices to figure it out and make sense of it. Uh, with a story map, you have the opportunity to, to put the interactive map into context. Uh, you have the opportunity to explain the importance of the topic, the nuances of the data that are being shown, introduce the, the uh, audience to new terminology, and explain uh, basically why the audience should care about the topic at hand. Um, so we're going to build a quick story map and stick to the basics. I don't have any new plan for health data or materials. Our grant is wrapped up. Uh, so the topic itself will be for demonstration purposes, and we're going to build a quick story map showcasing the works of the architect Daniel Liebeskin. Uh, the only thing I've created ahead of time is a shape file of projects that he has accomplished throughout the world. Uh, and it is a shapefile. Normally we prefer file geodatabases, but uh, shapefiles have been around sort of forever. They're kind of like the cockroach of the GIS world. Uh, no new technology seems to be able to uh, eliminate them. So I'm going to go find this shapefile of his projects, and I'm going to load it into ArcGIS Online. I'm already logged into ArcGIS Online for our agency. That's our organizational account. So there are his projects. Select Open, I'm telling the ArcGIS Online that this is a shape file. I'm going to publish this as a hosted layer. That's important to do because that's what allows us to have this data be interactive in our mapping environment. Um, the title of it I'm going to leave as is. Tags are used for finding data in ArcGIS Online. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, there can be lots of different data layers, so it's important to use tags to help find your data. Uh, sometimes you can have hundreds or thousands of data layers, so it makes it a little easier to, to sift through. So I'm just going to do a couple quick tags and click Add Item. And I'm going to sort of keep talking while it loads this, but what it's doing is it's uploading uh, that, that shapefile into ArcGIS Online and creating a feature service. Uh, and you'll see some of these options come into play over here on the right. Um, everything I'm doing is online today. I am not using desktop GIS software. Uh, if I had access to that, I would be able to open this new layer in my ArcGIS desktop uh, software, but for today's purposes, I'm just going to view and use this online. 
So what I do want to do is open this in a map viewer. So I'm going to go ahead and click that option. And you can see some orange dots. It's already placed on a map. Uh, the first thing I want you to notice is it's tried to uh, use a technique called smart mapping. It's trying to make sense of my data. Uh, this field here it thinks is uh, significant in terms of, you know, it's trying to proportionally symbolize this based on this value. What it doesn't know is this is actually the year completed, so that actually doesn't mean anything for the, our project. So I'm going to select single symbol. Uh, so in other words, I want all my dots to look the same. Uh, they have the same uh, level of importance. So I'm going to click Done. So now I've got my architectural projects on top of a base map. Uh, I want a, a symbology that sticks out a little bit more. So I'm going to select this orange color. I'm going to make the symbol a little bit bigger so that it stands out online. I'm going to click OK. I'm also going to make it transparent a little bit in case there's projects that are on top of each other. This will help uh, people be able to see the different uh, projects that are sort of hidden underneath each other. Go ahead and hit OK. It's going to take care of that, those changes for me. Click Done. The next thing I want to do is change my base map. Uh, again, if you're in ArcGIS Online, uh, you don't have to have all of your data in ArcGIS Online. You can use some of the stuff that's already provided online. Base maps are a big one of these uh, sort of features that are offered in ArcGIS Online. I really like the dark gray canvas. Uh, there's also a light gray canvas option further down here. These are provided by uh, ESRI, ESRI. Uh, some of these other options that you see are actually for my organization, so I'm going to stick to the dark gray canvas, and you can see it changes my base map in the background and I've got access to all of his projects throughout the world. Uh, what I'm going to do now is save as so that I don't lose any changes. Uh, enter a title for this. So I'm going to call this Libeskin Base Map. Uh, some of the same tags that I used before, and then I'll just put APA in there as well. Uh, description, I usually copy the title into the description, just makes it easier to remember. And I want to save this in a different folder. I'm going to do all my work today inside this Story Maps folder. Click Save. So when I go and click on one of these projects, the first thing you'll notice is that I, I had mentioned earlier that this year field is sort of symbolized weird. I don't need to see the, the comma and the decimals. I've also got a, a cryptic field name over here that I, you know, it's somewhat intuitive but could be more clear and I don't need this. so. I'm actually going to go into my Libeskin Projects layer and I'm going to do something called Configure Pop-Ups. Um, Pop-Ups have already been enabled. That's when you click on the map and that data comes up. So I'm going to click on Configure Pop-Ups, Configure the Attributes. That's the data that's attached to this. I'm going to turn off the FID field because I don't need to see that. This is the year completed, so I'm going to change that to actually say year completed. I don't need any decimal places and I don't need a comma separator. And then my project name field could be a little bit more clear, so I'm going to change that to say project name. OK. Hit OK. Hit save. And it should save all that content. So now when I click this, you can see it's been cleaned up to a year completed project name, and then that sort of cryptic FID field is now gone. So what I've done is I've, cre I, I've uploaded some data and I've created a very basic uh, web map. So what I want to do is open the item details for this web map. And this time I'm going to take the web map and create a web app out of that. Um, Story maps are one of these web apps and I'm going to use a template. Um, that's the easiest way. That's sort of if you want to think of this as like a PowerPoint uh, for maps. Uh, there's a bunch of templates that already exist in RTS Online. I already know the name of this, this particular one is a Story Map Journal. So I'm going to select Story Map Journal and Create Web App. I want to change the name of this so I don't get it mixed up with my uh, base map. So instead of calling it Base Map, I'm going to call it Libeskin World Architecture. The tags, I'm going to get rid of that base map one again. And I'm going to type in architecture. Uh, summary, I just copy the title, paste it into the summary. I'm saving it in that same story maps folder. I'm going to hit done. And it's going to load that map now into this story map template. 
and right away you're confronted with a couple of uh, decisions and the good thing about this is uh, you can get it wrong and still be right. Uh, these are flexible, which means at any point during the story mapping process you can actually change these options. I've had the luxury of building several of these and I kind of know what I want to begin with. So I'm going to do a floating panel. I'm going to hit start. I like the title of this, the Liebeskind World Architecture, so I'm going to hit go. And a couple of key things, main stage and floating panel. These are kind of nice to know. Uh, this is terminology we're going to reference uh, continuously throughout this. So the first thing it's asking you is do you want to put a map, an image, a video, or a web page in your main stage? Now, I told you having materials prepared ahead of time is sort of key to this, so I've had the luxury of building an outline, so I know exactly step by step what I'm putting in here, but the process is usually more organic. I'm going to put an image in, which you can upload from a desktop. That's extremely nice because that is new and uh, it allows you to sort of circumvent using Flickr or Google or in this case a, a link. I'm actually going to use the link because all of our images are hosted on a server that we have access to here. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is take my cover photo. I'm going to copy the full URL of that place that in here and you can either fill, which is to fill this entire sort of gray area fit, which means it won't distort the image, stretch and center. Um, I like the fill option. I hit next, checking the image. I use the, I just type in the word text. Um, you have to put something there to move on to the next step. I use the word text as a placeholder. I hit add. And you can see here I've got an image in the background and I've got this panel, but what I don't like is it's covering up one of the features I really want to see and it's covering up his portrait. So I'm going to go into my settings options. Still happy with floating panel, but what I want to do is switch the panel to the left instead of the right, and I would like to make it instead of 35%, which is medium, or 45%, which is large, I'm going to drop it down to 25% small, hit apply, flip that over to the left, and now I've got the title, I've got this nice image, and I've got some text that I'm ready to go. So I'm going to keep referring back to this Word document, and you'll kind of figure out what I'm doing as I go, but I'm going to grab this text, copy it, and then I'm back in my edit mode here, hit the edit button to edit the text in the side panel. So drop that text in there, make it a little bit bigger, a little easier for our audience to read, and I'm going to make it a different color and bold italicize, oops, italicize bold, make it stand out a little bit more, hit save. I'm happy with this. Uh, I've got a, my first page set up. What I'm going to do is hit save. You can see here in the top right, this is story is private. That means nobody outside of ArcGIS Online can see this, uh, including other users. This is actually just for me. So I'm going to hit save. Got a nice cover page. And so we're going to move on to the next part. We're going to add a new section. You need to give it a title, which I've, I'm going to copy straight from this Word document. Paste in there. I want to do another image. Repetition is good for learning, so we're going to drop another link in there. Switch back to the story map. And I'm going to do fill again so that it takes up that entire background. Put the word text in there for a placeholder. Hit add. So now I've got a, a nice new page that explains for the, our audience that is unfamiliar with what architecture is, what architecture is. I just so happen to have a definition of architecture, so we're going to grab that. Edit, paste, we're going to change that size again to 24, make it easier for our audience to read. I liked uh, that same sort of symbol, I'm sorry, same color, it's what we used before, so make that stand out a little bit. Put some italics in there, and then use some carriage returns or enters to uh, separate that text block on the right, so, or I'm sorry, on the left, so that it makes it a little bit easier to read. I'm happy with this page, I'm going to hit save. So now I've got two pages on my story map completely built, add a new section. Um, so this time we're actually going to use the web, the web map that we just built. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a section title. So the world works of Libeskin. This time I'm going to use a map. And I'm going to use that base map that I just created earlier in this. And what I want to do is called a custom configuration. What that allows you to do is center the map or frame the map in a way that's more desirable to your purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that, and you can see that it loads in the background. Um, I have the opportunity to sort of center that, put most of his projects. 
sort of in the middle right here. You can see a few off to the left, but I'm more interested in this particular part of the world. Hit Save Map Location. Next, I'm going to put text in here as a placeholder and add. So now I've got the third page of my story map. I'm ready to put some text in here. Edit. Oops. Drop that text in there. Select all the text. Make it size 24 again. Hit Save. So we've kind of got a little background on him. And you can see down here I've got a, a section for notable works. Uh, we're going to do a little, um, what's, what, uh, we're going to create what's called an action in the main stage. So we're going to change what happens over here in our story map. So first thing I'm going to do, make this bold. And what I want to do is highlight one of these, one of these notable works. So the Ascent at Roblin's Bridge uh, happens to be local. So I'm going to highlight that text and change the main stage content. Um, I still want it to be the map, but I want to do a custom configure, or actually I want to do a custom pop-up. So I'm going to select this particular project and see here uh, that it's going to have this action or this item pop up, which is the main stage action. So I'm going to hit save. Then I'm going to hit apply to make sure that these changes stick. Now save. So when I go into this page of my story map and click on the Ascent at Roblin's Bridge, instead of my audience having to know where that is, I can have them click there and, and, and have the software or the story map tell them where it is. Uh, an ex another example of a, of a main stage action is uh, we're going to use this Memory Foundations project. New content, but this time I want it to be an image. Hosted URL. Copy, paste, fill, hit apply, hit save. So when I click on the ascent, I still get the pop-up, but when I click on the World Center Memory Foundations, I get this image of this particular notable work. So there's different ways you can interact with a story map. You can have users do the work, or you can have pop-ups do the work. I'm really happy with myself in this project, so I'm going to hit Save. Everything is looking good. New section. This next one is going to be uh, about the ascent at Roblin's Bridge. Um, this time I'm going to use my same map. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to use the map. I want to use a web page. I'm going to actually embed a live website into my story map. I've got the URL for that right here. Um, this one took me a little bit of time to sort of play with uh, to figure out how to make this work because of the floating panel. Uh, it wants to put the web page behind that floating panel, which makes it hard to use. So I'm going to use a custom configuration. I'm going to do 60% width, 100% height, and I'm just going to uncheck these options. Hit next, type the word text for a placeholder. Got a new page now. And what I want you to notice is it's moved this entire web, uh, website for the Ascent over to the right. Um, I want to put some text into that sidebar to explain to people what's going on there. So I'm going to copy this text, edit, drop that in there, change it to size 24, and then um, do the same color, stick with that throughout this. Uh, Sort of like the way that comes across, got a nice architectural uh, review sort of quote. A uh, couple of awards. We'll make that section bold. Hit save. And you can see now that we have introduced our, our uh, audience to the ascent, and we now have a page for them to view about this. It was completed in 2008. Um, and if you're interested in, in that particular uh, building, you can actually kind of cruise through their website live inside your story map. The advantage of this is that you do not have to get your audience off track. You don't have to separate them from your project. You can have them view web-based information inside your story map without losing it. Uh, next page. These next, next couple of pages are, are a little bit fun. Uh, we're going to do a map again. Like my base map, custom configuration. This time, instead of having a pop-up or something like that, I'm going to actually zoom into the project. Um, and, and when they switch to this page, uh, the uh, base map will automatically zoom to this, what's called extent here. So you can see Cincinnati across the river. Covington is in Kenton County. Kenton County is where I work. I'm going to hit Save Map Location. 
next, wants text, add that as a placeholder. So now I can introduce uh, a little bit more about the seventh floor. Um, this is a fairly exclusive uh, residential unit. This is not uh, where most of us in Northern Kentucky have the opportunity to live. I'm going to make this text size same as before. And this time I'm actually going to put, instead of an image over here in my main stage, I'm actually going to put an image in my side panel. So lots and lots of visuals for these story maps to really engage the audience. Once again, I've got that URL already prepared, which is going to make it fairly easy to copy, paste. I'm just going to call this seventh floor view. Now I want you to notice I'm going to check this maximize. This will make sense here in a second, but this gives the, the audience the ability to make this picture bigger. Hit apply, and I've got the ability to kind of resize that image. I don't want it to get too large because it'll run out of my side panel. Hit save. So now you can see here we're on the seventh floor. It's an available condo. Uh, as of 015, it was available, available for about three quarters of a million dollars. I've shown my audience where it is, and if they want a bigger picture, you can see the view from the seventh floor overlooks the Roebling Bridge, which is the predecessor to the Brooklyn Bridge, uh, the skyline of downtown Cincinnati, great American ballpark where the Reds play. I'm very happy with this page. I'm going to hit save. But I've decided maybe I haven't fully sold my audience on this, so we're going to add a new section. Uh, seventh floor living might not be quite enough to draw us, our audience in, so I'm going to put title for the 14th floor, same base map, custom configuration, but what it's going to do is actually default to where I just was. I'm happy with that, so I'll leave that there. Save map location. This time we're going to do text again, so I add this new floor, or I'm sorry, this new page. Go back into edit. So the 14th floor unit is a penthouse. It's a little bit larger. Also, so is the price tag. Uh, make that size 24. Put a new image into my side panel. Fourteenth floor view. Maximize button, hit apply, and then I'm going to scoot down here. Make that a little smaller, hit save. I'm happy with this page, so I'm going to hit save. So now you can see that if the seventh floor living isn't quite your style, you've at, uh, got the opportunity to purchase the 14th floor view, uh, floor to ceiling walls overlooking the same downtown Cincinnati skyline with the Roebling Bridge and Great American Ballpark. Uh, close this back to my story map. I'm still happy with this, so we're going to add a new section. So I've shown you maps, images, web pages. Let's try a video. Uh, so I already know ahead of, I've already got this sort of bookmarked, if you will. So I'm going to use a video. It prefers YouTube and Vimeo hosted video options, but you can do your own link. This one is a YouTube video. It's a TEDx talk. It's going to check to make sure that it's compatible, which it is. So I'm going to select that video. I'm going to do a fill. Next. Oops. Want a title. And so that's why you see me put sort of the word text as a placeholder. Sometimes it won't let you continue until you intentionally type something. So now I can hit next, type the word text, add. So I've got a new um, page here to my story map. It's got his TED Talk. And then I'm going to tell our audience a little bit about what, what they're getting ready to see instead of making them watch the entire video. Consistent for the size font. And I've got my carriage returns to separate those. So you can see here now it's got a description of what this video is. I'm going to hit play. Uh, the audio on this isn't really important, but I want, what I want you to see is that the video will play, again, like the Internet. It's, in, it's embedded in this story map. So you're not losing your audience. You're not sending them to somebody else's website or to a different location. You're keeping them on your site. So I'm going to hit pause on this. I'm happy with this page. Hit save. project is saved. We're going to add, I believe, one more section. Uh, two, actually. So we're going to do uh, the ascent again. Oops, copied the wrong thing. So I want one more opportunity to sell my audience on the ascent. Uh, we're going to do that same web page.
configure. And if you remember before, this is the one I custom configured, so I want to keep the look and feel the same. 60%, 100%, uncheck these. Next, type the word text as a placeholder. You can see here I've got the ascent embedded. So one last chance uh, to get them interested in available homes. So I want to explain what sets this uh, property apart from everywhere else. So I'm going to focus on this aspect of living at the ascent. It is not just living, it's an investment. We are going to embed an image again, URL with the link. And what's very interesting about this particular uh, condo is their HOA actually has some artwork to, to sort of decorate the common areas, but the artwork is actually a, a managed investment and it's uh, appreciated in, in value over time. So uh, just an, an interesting tidbit about uh, living there. Uh, so the uh, last portion of this we're just going to close with a sort of a closing slide here, uh, giving our audience a reminder that we want to engage and inspire them with story maps, so we're going to do one last image. Oops. This time we'll do uh, center, I believe. Next. Oops. Center it. So now we have the opportunity to close off our story map with a couple of uh, side panel actions again. So I'm going to go to edit mode, got some text already prepared, copy over that, change it to 24, hit save. I'm happy with this page, but there's a few last little tweaks I want to do. Put another image here, just a reminder of what story maps are and how our audience can get to them. Don't need a maximize button with this one. I'm going to scale the size of this down just a little bit. And then one last thing I want to do is I want to highlight this text here where it says ESRI story maps. I'm going to make this a link. So it gives me an opportunity to put a URL in there. I've got that already ready to go. And a real quick comment about these links. This particular link will take me to a new web page. Hit save. You can actually link PDFs, new images, um, basically any document you want your audience to have access to. Uh, one of the examples I, I give is a demographic report. Uh, you can sort of introduce your demographic topic over here on the left and give like a one paragraph synopsis uh, and then provide your audience with 12 pages of demographic details if they want it or not. Uh, instead of making people suffer through that, you give them the option uh, to choose whether they need that for themselves or not. I'm going to save this and then just to show you, if you click Esri Story Maps, it will then take you to the ESRI Story Maps page. We're doing fairly well with time, had a little hiccup at the beginning. Um, so this is um, building a story map. So this was sort of a basic walkthrough. Um, the one I'm going to show you with the uh, plan for health is a little bit more robust. We spent a lot more time on the, uh, the, the interactive map. And so I want to give you a chance to kind of see, now that you've seen how you add this content, develop this content, give you a chance to see what we did at the uh, plan for health project. So our plan for health one is here. And we're going to go ahead and view that application. So the plan for health coalition story map was rolled out and completed in October of 2015 with only uh, small changes made after the data completion. Uh, I work in our agency's GIS group, so we came into the picture sort of late in the process. We had uh, built four or five story maps up to that point and suggested that to the plan for health coalition team. 
as an online resource for coalition members, for citizens, uh, just any interested parties. Um, the APA communication staff, I believe, has also put together several story maps, but I, I, it's my understanding that Kenton County was the first coalition to put together a story map specifically for a Plan for Health coalition. Uh, so we kind of had a head start in this area. Uh, so why did we create a story map? Uh, I think it's kind of becoming evident uh, of the, the power of the presentation format. But just for full disclosure, uh, we are an ESRI shop, meaning that all of our GIS software, uh, we, we run ESRI. It's the backbone of all GIS activities. Our uh, GIS partnership is managed by PDS, but we serve three counties and 36 municipalities. Our uh, GIS capabilities have been around for over 30 years. Um, so GIS software, especially the ESRI software, has evolved tremendously over the last five, especially the last three. If you're not fully in tune with what's happening in the GIS world, every, almost everything is moving online. The desktop stuff is all still there, but uh, it, may, it makes more sense now to think of GIS as an ecosystem of software. Desktop, mobile, iPhones, iPads, online, server is all part of this ecosystem, but they can all use the same parts and the same pieces. So story maps are just a part of this ecosystem. Um, but content created in one place can easily be used in another. Uh, the mapping and analysis required for the original Plan for Health grant uh, was done in the desktop environment, but it was easily adapted into interactive maps that fit into our story map. Um, so much like apps for your phone, there are now apps for GIS, and it's easiest to just think of story maps as one of these apps. Uh, another sort of quick why story maps, um, I think the complexity of planning is not always obvious to people on the outside of this profession, and the ability to introduce key points, terminology, and concepts, especially tied to maps and visuals, is just a, it's a fantastic tool and a great opportunity to not overload your audience with information at the beginning. Uh, the story mapping process, when it's done well, can be extremely collaborative, which makes perfect sense for these Plan for Health coalitions. And then finally, I would argue that story maps have the, the ability to provoke emotion, uh, and that can further engage your audience and, and create some more interaction with people uh, in terms of feedback and buy-in. And finally, we found, especially in, in GIS and planning, that it's a great opportunity to start what we call a data-driven discussion. Use GIS and, anal and, and analysis to start the conversation with current conditions, what's on the ground, what's actually out there. So, Having kind of gone through the why story maps, I think I've kind of made the point clear that you know, we've bought into this, um, you know, we're all in, uh, but I'm going to walk you through the story map that we built for Plan for Health. So this is our intro slide, uh, but the first one I really want to slow, show you is on page three, which is how to use this story map. I mentioned earlier that it's not always intuitive what you're supposed to do with one of these interactive maps. So we actually built a how to use this story map page. It's not an option under the help menu somewhere. It's actually part of the story map. So you can see here with this enlarge button, I can see my legend and what all these dots and colors mean for this project. I'm learning that if I click one of these gray areas called a TAZ, which is a traffic analysis zone, uh, I'll get a whole bunch of data, but the cool stuff is hidden at the bottom. So I'm telling my audience to scroll down to the graphs. So I've shown them how to do that, and then I've shown them also to scroll right up to five times. As you can see here, there's zero car households is one pie chart, disabled persons is another pie chart. So there's, there's different metrics for each one of these TAZs that were used in the original analysis for the Plan for Health grant. The Corner Store Initiative is another page uh, that I felt was worth kind of calling out. We have... Uh, we're very fortunate to have a, a, an extremely talented video producer on staff. He, he went to school for planning, but he has some exceptional video talent that I don't think most agencies have uh, access to in-house. But he put together, uh, as part of the, the team, one of these uh, interview videos. And it's, it's just amazing because you've got the interview of the person, Kate, who's explaining what this project is. And you can see in the background this actual interactive map the very one that you see in this project is being demonstrated as part of the interview. So we're not going to go through the whole interview, but I guess what I wanted to emphasize is when it's done well, video can be a huge part of these story maps, and we try to keep all of our videos at or under two minutes. Uh, the next page I'm going to show you is 
from the Corner Store Initiative. It's uh, Bill's Food Mart. So you can see we've got a couple of different one of these that were selected. Uh, there's two things going on here. Uh, we're back to images again, but they're extremely powerful. We have a locator map over here. So you know we've already introduced our audience to the different locations around town, but just a reminder where we are, you know, adjacent to the interstate or next to the interstate and the Licking River and the parks throughout the area. We've got an actual what I'd call a site photo. This is the actual equipment used with part of the, to purchase with part of the Plan for Health grant uh, to put these coolers in some of these corner stores to provide access to healthy and fresh foods. We've also got some marketing literature that was part of the Health Healthy Corner Store Initiative in Covington in Kenton County. So there's there's a lot of different things going on on just this one page of the story map. Eat Healthy NKY was an outreach effort. It was uh, the third sort of uh, part of the, uh, the uh, Plan for Health Coalition strategy. Facebook doesn't like to it, Facebook doesn't like to let you embed on the on the site over here. So we took a screen capture, put the image in, and then we put the Facebook link off to the side. So you can see here, if you click on the Facebook link, it will actually take you to the plan, uh, the Kenton County Plan for Health Facebook page. Um, we also put that back at the bottom, gave our audience two opportunities to get there. Um, we've tried Facebook several times and have not been able to get it to work. So uh, just sort of an FYI. Um, this is the uh, sort of the closing portion of the Plan for Health grant. They did a, a food policy summit. The web page is embedded over here. You can see it's, the, the event ended. It was featured right here, but if you click the item details, it'll bring all that back up. So about a year ago, less than a year ago, we had a food policy summit with uh, two to 300 people. It's everything from how to prepare food, where to get food, uh, fresh and healthy food, that is. And uh, just, you know, students, uh, members of the community, citizens, producers, growers, everything were, were part of this food policy summit. Um, again, our, our video guy did a, a nice video. I'm just going to let this run again just to give you an idea. There's not really much in the way of audio, uh, but I showed you on, uh, previously you can embed stuff in this side panel. So if you click here, you can actually get an agenda of what this food summit was all about, who's going to be there, what the topics are. Uh, so it's all still still there. The uh, Last part of this that I'm going to touch on, I'm kind of running out of time here, is we close all of our story maps with uh, two things, Direction 2030 and Link GIS. Uh, Direction 2030, I, this in and of itself is an entire presentation, and it was actually at the uh, Seattle National Planning Conference. It is the Kenton County Comprehensive Plan that is online. Uh, when I say online, it was built from the ground up. It was the first rebuild of the comp plan in, in uh, a couple of decades, but it, it's not just a couple of PDFs slapped up on a website and say, oh, hey, we've got it online. Uh, this thing is, exists only online. Uh, there were no courtesy copies printed and delivered behind the scenes. Uh, the public is using the same uh, online comp plan as uh, citizens. Uh, it, again, I've embedded it here in this story map so I can see what the goals and objectives are of Direction 2030, uh, we've bro broken them down into you know, primary and sub goals or, or secondary goals. Um, that, that's this whole other presentation there in and of itself. But it's it's one of the first in the nation to go completely online and, and be intended to use uh, in, in that capacity. Um, this effort was, you know, I work in the GIS group. Our Plan for Health Coalition, you know, we presented the idea of a story map. They drove it. They drove this idea. They provided us content. They had final say over, you know, content, map layers, interviews, photos, text, support materials. Uh, and, and they were all in, too. As soon as they saw uh, some of the earlier ones that we had built, they, 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 they were on board. Um, we, we shared the link, the story map link with the entire team before it went public. So that's part of that collaborative process. A lot of eyes on it, feedback from all over the place. Um, and everybody from Plan for Health had the option to, to sort of look at this and review it uh, before it went public. So, uh, and we finished with Link GIS. That's the, that's the uh, GIS group that I mentioned earlier that's been around for over 30 years and serves the three counties and 36 municipalities. Uh, we've talked a little bit about graphics, content, um, imagery, or images. Um, none of this is stock photos. I 
I hate stock photography, so most of this was site visits and personal photos, you know. Um, but a couple of really nice tools that I, I want you to be aware of, so making sure you get your money's worth, even though this was free. Uh, Pixlr is an online photo, I'm going to call it retouching software. It's not like a full-blown Photoshop. Um, there's Editor and Express. I use Express. Oh, you got to be kidding. There we go. Um, it, this is, it's really neat because you can browse for a photo and you can just bring in one of these photos uh, into this online thing and you can start to do some different, you know, uh, effects. So if you give it a focal blur, make the Roebling Bridge, maybe the highlight of this hit apply, you can go in here and put an effect in and make it, you know, kind of unicolor. Um, I know this is probably overdone, that the whole sepia effect, but, uh, if it'll do that. I may have just locked it up. So anyway, um, Pixlr is a really good one uh, to, to, to do some sort of enhancements to your photography to make it just a, a touch better than average. Uh, another one of these, there it goes, and then you've got the ability to control how much of that effect you want. So sometimes less is more, hit apply, and then you can go back and save it. Um, so anyway, uh, close that, don't need it, done with that. The last one is collages. Um, again, not real critical, but I'm going to do a free collage maker. I like these sites because they are free, and when they say free, it means completely free. You don't need an account or anything else. You dump all your pictures into the image manager on the left, pick a, a, a template. I'm going to do a real simple um, Little simple one here that's kind of, there you go. Grab the images and just start dropping these images in and you can kind of reposition things and highlight different sort of aspects of your photography. So uh, this is a collage maker by a group called B Funky, F-U-N-K-Y dot com. Uh, I don't own stock in either of these, but they're great online tools. Um, the uh, Story map is, is finished at this point. Uh, I've gone through the plan for health stuff. I've shown you everything that I intended to. Uh, I did want to point out real quick that we, uh, Elizabeth mentioned the Kent County plan for health or the plan for health site. We embedded that up front. So that's one of the first things that you'll see when you actually come on to our story map is what is plan for health and, and what's, the, what's the purpose of this topic and these grants. So at this point, I think we're getting close to the end. I think we're, we've got about 10 minutes left for question and answer. Great. Yes. Thank you so much, Lewis. That was a fabulous how-to and then a walk through the plan for health map. That was, that was wonderful. Thank you. Absolutely. So we do have a few folks who submitted questions while you were presenting, but um, if you're on the line and you have something on your mind, feel free to chat, to chat them into the question box now. Uh, the first question we've, we've gotten a couple of different ways, and I know you mentioned at the very beginning of the, the presentation um, the, the Esri software itself, and, and folks are just wondering, is this free? How do I sign up for a free account? Uh, I know you mentioned being part of a, an organization or agency that has a, a larger account is helpful, but um, are there ways to just go ahead and dive in and create a story map completely uh, for free? Uh, yes. Um, however, uh, there's a lot. So I'm just going to we're using an organizational account which is not free. Um, that comes with, uh, it's basically it's part of our maintenance. Like um, if, you, if you purchase um, ESRI software, you pay a, a maintenance fee each year um, for tech support and stuff like that. But th this online account is sort of part of that being current with our maintenance. Um, we also uh, have ArcGIS server which allows us to publish our own maps and data and house them on a server instead of on in ArcGIS Online. The individual accounts are, they're, it's like anything else that's free, they're, they're fairly limited. Um, you, you would need to do, you need to get creative in terms of what you could do in, in terms of uh, storing content and maps in, inside one of these story maps. But yeah, th these accounts are free, um, but they're so much more powerful if you can get attached to an organizational account. Um, I hope that makes some sense. Mm -hmm. That does. Thank you. Um, and, and folks are also curious if you um, have any recommendations about other story map templates. 
for um, other resources maybe outside of what you've shared today? Yeah, uh, and I, I, I'm trying to put it up on screen right now. The uh, ESRI has a story map gallery. Um, I highly recommend it. Uh, we we, we uh, browse through it every so often ourselves. Um, users from around, the, literally from around the world, submit their story maps to ESRI, and the, these entries are they're vetted and hand selected by um, ESRI staff. So they, the the cream of the crop tends to sort of, of be on the on this story map gallery, but it gives you an idea of what you can do. Everything from the uh, the straight out out of the box online. Um, you know, template to, uh, there's some ones that are customized, and that's actually something I didn't even talk about. You can download the code for these templates off of GitHub and put them on your own server and modify them, you know, through programming. We don't do that right now. Um, it, there's some extra learning curves and some extra steps involved with that, but uh, some of the really, really nice ones are custom. Um, uh, those custom, you know, uh, features that have been hosted on their own servers. So um, all the story maps we've done, I believe we've done 18 to date. Um, all of ours are hosted on ArcGIS Online, which means that we use the uh, the same templates that I just showed the audience today. Great. Okay. Um, the next couple of questions are, are a little bit uh, just some technical kind of nuts and bolts. So as you're as you were working through the demonstration map and we're building the pages, is it possible to to see how that map would look in a mobile device as you go along, or do you kind of have to wait till the end and, and check things out on, on your phone once it's been published? Yeah, um, there's not an easy way to do it on a mobile device. You, there, there's a couple of things going on. You could log in to ArcGIS Online on your phone. Um, mm -hmm. The screen real estate would be so limited, though, that it would be tough to navigate in that environment. Uh, one of the things that we do a lot is we'll make the story map public, like just say for an hour on an afternoon. Um, we'll make it public, but you have to have the URL. So this URL right here for the Kenton County Plan for Health story map, we will make our project public, but then we give that URL out just to the people who are supposed to have it they can look at it for that hour or two that it's up, and then we go back in and turn that to private. Um, so that would be one way to be able to sort of get a quick sneak peek at, or a preview at, at what it looks like on a mobile device. I can tell you that story maps do not work well on iPhones. They look uh, fantastic on iPads, um, but I think the screen real estate on a mobile device is just too small. Now, having said that, I mentioned Story Maps are just one of the apps that are available in this GIS ecosystem. ESRI has hundreds of apps that are designed specifically for mobile and iOS devices. Hmm. Great, okay. And speaking of, of making a map um, public for a short period of time, uh, we did receive a question about that final step. So how do you officially publish a Story Map once you're finished with it? Yeah, that probably would have been a good one to cover. <laughs> it's under the share, so I'm, I'm back in edit mode, and this time I'm, in, I'm actually uh, under uh, share. Um, everything we did with the uh, Liebeskind one was done under private. Um, you can switch it to organization which means that anybody in your organization that has an AGOL or ArcGIS Online account can see it. And then the third step is public, which means that's the entire, you know, internet. Anybody that's online can, can grab that. Um, this is the short link. If you look up here, this is actually the full link, this, uh, this really cryptic app ID, which is really kind of annoying to have to send. So they've kind of, kind of like Bitly or anything else, they've truncated that with this ArcGIS. Uh, there's also an embed in web pages, which is what we did actually for the Plan for Health Coalition website. We created the story map. It's stored and hosted in ArcGIS Online, but if you take this code right here, send it to the IT guy who's in charge of the Plan for Health website, they can then embed the story map in that web page. Um, so uh, that, that's a couple of things in terms of sharing, There's and then you've got the option to do Facebook and Twitter. Um, when there are changes. I also didn't cover under settings, uh, the header, you can put the ESRI logo, no logo, or my logo. So I've got a custom logo up here, Planning Development Services of Kent County. If you click that, it'll actually go to our website. And then if you click our NKY Map Lab logo, it'll go to the Map Lab site. 
Um, so there's a couple of other little things, and here's where that link is if you want to share with somebody. Hmm. And, and we have a related question about hosting the content. So it's it's posted on, on your account. You're embedding it in other places. How do you approach updating the plan itself? Do you just need to update it once in the main account and everything flows from there? Or are, do you have any recommendations about you know, coming back maybe in a year to the plan for health and storing up and adding a, a, another page or two? Yeah, well, uh, I guess we kind of did our story map at the end. So ours was pretty much wrapping up anyway. Um, I, I guess that's an internal decision. Um, we we build all of our story map stuff under admin accounts, so we were pretty selective about who had access to that. Um, but we also had multiple. There's multiple people that have that admin, so there's multiple people that were able to make that change. But we did not just anybody in the Plan for Health Coalition could make a change. Um, they could call out a change or put in a request for one. And with that many people, you know, I said we had three or four people with admin rights, so it was pretty easy to get a change through. But I, I would argue that that's just that's an organizational preference, and you know, depending on how skilled your your group is and how much you trust them and how flexible you want things to be or not be. Um, we built the the entire story map, and then I think the food policy summit was the only thing that we came in and added sort of after the fact, and that was uh, literally one of our planners sat at my desk with a with a a Word document of exactly what he wanted in there and some pictures that, that were snapped at the event and we just knocked it out in like 20 or 30 minutes. Hmm. Okay, great. Um, I do have a couple of pretty specific questions about um, the, the initial demonstration map and just folks are, sounds like folks are already trying to create their own maps and, and wanted to circle back with a, a few um, questions for you. I know very early on you were talking about tags, and so you're tagging your content as you're creating it. Um, how do you create your own tags, or are you pulling from a list of tags that are already in the system? No. Um, so when you both when you when you start to type, it, it does like a sort of a, a an auto not auto correct, but it's trying to predict uh, what you're mm -hmm. typing. So if you've used a tag over and over again. It will recognize that you're trying to type the word like plan for health. It will recognize that you're trying to type that out and it will offer that to you as a suggestion. If you type the word planners um, as a whole new word and hit return, it will then add that tag. So you can add ones that have never been used before or you can reuse ones that have been used previously. But the more tags you have in your system, the more it's trying to predict what you're going to, what, what you want to tag it with. So does it go with this project, that project, or the other project? Okay, that makes sense. Um, and then there is a specific question about the, the video piece. So as we were building the, the map earlier in the webinar, um, you added the TED Talk video. And, and this uh, participant is wondering, is there a way to minimize the side panel during the video? So when you hit play, we still saw the text on the side and the video in the background. Is there another way to display that? I I. I honestly don't know the answer to that. Usually the template is fairly consistent throughout the, uh, the, the course of the presentation. There might be a few things that you can do. Um, I, I would be willing to bet if you were to uh, download that and host that on your own server, you could control that. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, um, no, you can't. But what, what I would offer as a suggestion is instead of having that main stage take up the whole thing, either do a custom configuration like we did before, or uh, or center it or, or just place it uh, differently, I guess. And so I did the same numbers that I did for the Ascent website, and now it's blank underneath the side panel, but at least it's moved my TED Talk out from under it. Hmm, gotcha. Okay. We do have a couple of more questions, and I know it's getting to just about uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard. So I did want to remind folks that this webinar has been recorded and we will post it on the Plan for Health website uh, for you to, to download and to listen to. Um, certainly, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me directly. And my email address is ehartig, my last name, H-A-R-T as in Tom, I-G, at planning.org. Um, but Lewis has, has been willing to, to he'll stay on the line for just a couple more minutes. So um, take the last couple of questions that we received. Um, I do want to thank you all today for joining us and certainly um, spending the hour learning about maps has been really, really helpful for me, and I hope I hope for you as well. Sure.
So we did have a question about metrics that I thought was, was interesting and I wanted to, to see what you thought. Um, so is there a way to, to track the number of users or are you able to, to kind of figure out how effective the program is at, at really engaging the public? Yes, but not as well as I would like. Uh, if you're in that sort of admin view, uh, I'm trying to get back to it right now, where it's got my list of my content here. So give me just a second to get back to, yeah. Under uh, usage, you can see here, um, the, you can control the time period for this and then how many times it's been viewed. Uh, it doesn't really break it down. The problem we noticed is it does not break it down by um, public versus private or internal versus external. Um, I'm not sure why, how there's even 65 views of this, to be honest, because uh, I just created this like right now. Um, so the, the, the numbers are a little bit wonky. Um, it's not nearly as sophisticated as Google Analytics or, or something like that that can break it down by mobile, tablet, what location people are looking at, but um, you can break it down by these different time periods and you can see that there'll sort of be a, a chart that kind of, uh, you know, you can see when the highs and lows are, but to the best of my knowledge, that's the only access you have to sort of use, usability, or not usability, but how it's being used. Mm -hmm. Great, okay. Um, and then we did have a, another question about um, website design software as a possible alternative to story map creation. Um, and, and just kind of your thoughts about that. So certainly it sounds like story maps give us a lot of flexibility in terms of the images and the videos. Would you say this is different or better than a, another kind of website design software that would just incorporate maps? Uh, that, that's a tough question to answer, and that's kind of why I prefaced it with the uh, full disclosure we are an ESRI shop. Um, I know Google has something similar to these story maps. There's other groups that are offering it. Um, for, for us, it's the ecosystem of GIS software. We've already got most of this stuff built and sitting around. Uh, it, it's easy to just make some minor adjustments, tweaks, and then put it into this story map format. Um, I'm not going to argue that it, they're not going to replace websites or web pages. Um, I, they, just like anything else, PowerPoint, you know, it's, there's some obvious similarities to PowerPoint. PowerPoint has its time and place, but it can be, it can be awful. I mean, you know, people do nothing but text. Um, it's too small to read. There's no visuals, or you're looking at the same stuff over and over. They just read it to you. Um, story maps are the same. If you don't use them right, if you just kind of, uh, you know, just if you don't put a lot of thought, time, effort into it, it can come across as just kind of, kind of just not that well done, and you kind of lose your audience in the first two pages. So, it's a tough question in my my opinion to answer. Um, but for what we do and the software we already had, it it was a a perfect launching uh, point. Great, that makes sense. Scott. That is true. Every, every tool has its potential and potential pitfalls as well. Um, well, great. Well, I, I think um, that about wraps up the, the Q&A portion of the presentation. And, and just thank you again, Louis, for taking the time to walk us through the, the nuts and bolts of creating a map and then uh, really the plan for health um, feature and even just sharing a little bit about Direction 2030. I think that's a really fabulous uh, way to think about engaging the public around comp plan. And, and, and certainly, I, I know folks on the line appreciated um, hearing about that as well. Yeah, um, I, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you to everyone that stayed around, uh, expressed some interest. Uh, sort of a shameless plug here for our agency, Planning Development Services of Kenton County. Uh, they are, again, the managing partner of our GIS group, the Link GIS uh, website, the Planning Development Services website. Uh, Direction 2030 is, the again, the online comprehensive plan website. And then you've probably seen NKY Map Lab kind of referred to throughout these. I just wanted to sort of mention that that's the collaborative effort between PDS and Link GIS. And, you know, in keeping with the, the Direction 2030 being online, uh, Map Lab is sort of intended to engage uh, the public in terms of topics that are relevant to comp plans and current planning and sort of keep that in the forefront of public discussion year-round, not just when it's time to update the comp plan. So 
Um, that's what all the different winks are for, uh, and it, it is all sort of related. But thank you again to everyone that took the time to, to sit through a lunch hour and listen to us uh, discuss story maps. Great. Thank you so much. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. You too.